Steve, the fine-tuning of the universe has become a very hot topic, both within the world of cosmologists and physicists and theologians. I come to you as a historian to give me some background of how to understand this whole intellectual phenomena. Well, the fine-tuning of the universe is a very interesting uh, concept, which goes back, I think, not any further than oh, about 1960 or so. And first, I'd like to say that the, it, the, an, the anthropic principle as a term is, uh, is really a misnomer. It's really more a biocentric principle, that the constants of the universe and the laws of the universe are fine-tuned for life, not necessarily for humans. Uh, so that's, uh, it, it really needs to be framed in a broader way. However, it was first framed in terms of anthropic, uh, in terms of humans, uh, in the early 1960s by Princeton physicist Robert Dickey, who simply noted taking one of the constants, which is the age of the universe, called the, the Hubble age of the universe, uh, that uh, our very existence put, puts constraints on the age of the universe. It can't be too young because it can't be, say, younger than a billion or two billion years because you have to have developed planets, stars, and galaxies. Uh, furthermore, you have to have uh, had the elements, the higher elements, especially carbon, um, made, manufactured out of the, from the center of the stars, which is where they are manufactured, so that uh, you can't have a universe that's too young. You can't have a universe that's too old, which is then running down and the stars are burning out. So that puts some constraints. So what he is, what Dickey was saying in, in the early 1960s is simply that by, you don't have to look at at cosmology, you don't have to look at the universe, you don't have to look out there, you can look here and put constraints on, the, on, the, on what the universe is like. A fascinating way to think. Right, and that was just the beginning. Uh, uh, the uh, other people then took it uh, further with other constants, uh, some of the other constants, the gravitational constant. If the gravitational constant were slightly different, uh, that uh, you, know, you couldn't have had the stars form in the, in the way that they did. And so people like uh, Brandon Carter in the late 1970s pointed out uh, that uh, many of the, uh, the, uh, the constants, uh, ranging from the gravitational constant to the age of the universe and lots of other things, um, do seem to be fine-tuned for life. And the question is why uh, or how? Uh, and there are really two answers to that. One is uh, the, the uh, the theological types would say, well, God did it, and it's a good argument for, for theism. Uh, but what the anthropic principle people said uh, was that uh, it may, maybe, uh, maybe there's an alternative natural explanation, and that is that the, uh, there's more than one universe. Maybe there's a multiverse, and we just happen to be living in one where things are fine-tuned, which would explain why they were fine-tuned, because uh, you couldn't exist in any other universe uh, you, humans couldn't, or life couldn't, uh, except one where these uh, laws and constants were fine-tuned. So in that context, um, do we see this great expansion of our understanding of what the universe is from 100 years ago to today as an independent confirmation of, say, the multi-universe part? Well, it's hard to get any confirmation of the multi, uh, multiverse. Uh, because by definition you can't actually see them. Um, and in some ways that returns to the ancient Greek uh, idea about uh, many cosmoi which you couldn't actually see. <laughs> but uh, I have to say that I'm always amazed when I think back a hundred years, where we were, our cosmological view a hundred years ago. There was a very interesting book on plurality of worlds written by A.R. Wallace, who was the co-founder with Darwin of the theory of natural selection. He was a biologist, but he did write this book on plurality of worlds. And he pointed out that at his time, uh, he, as by, by way of beginning, the cosmology uh, of the time was a universe where the Earth was in the center, where the extent of that universe was only about 3,500 light years, uh, and it was a universe that was static. It was not evolving. And if you look now, just 100 years later, our universe is entirely different. It's, uh, as you can tell from the Hubble Deep Field, are the other pictures that the Hubble Space Telescope uh, takes. We are in a universe that is 13.7 billion years old, so th more than 13 billion years in extent. Uh, it's a universe uh, where uh, we are not in any way central. The Milky Way is one of billions of galaxies. 
and it's a universe that is constantly evolving, uh, a universe that is ruled by cosmic evolution, astronomical, biological, and cultural. So uh, that, um, that's not exactly confirmation of a, of a multiverse, but it's a very different universe than we had just a century ago. Just in a hundred years, this enormity of difference, not in reality, but in our perception and our appreciation of what that reality is. The reality was always out there. It was always there, and, and who knows in the future what we're going to find. Uh, but uh, I do think that we need to uh, take that into account in uh, our philosophies, our, our uh, theologies, and, and our other uh, thinking. And in this context, the fine-tuning of the universe and this so-called anthropic or biocentral principle, how important do you think that is, uh, from a historian's point of view, in giving us a, a richer and deeper understanding? Do you think it's a passing phenomenon or something that will have historical depth? Well, people argue about this. Some people think of it as a trivial thing, uh, <laughs> that, uh, well, what else is new? But I think it's more profound than that because it forces you to really think uh, at the most basic level of our, uh, you know, the physical nature of our universe and how it relates to life. Uh, the, you know, why should the universe be built in such a way that uh, the gravitational constant and the other, the other constants, the physical constants and the laws are made for life? I think that's a, that's a profound question uh, that we don't know the answer to, but uh, I believe uh, Freeman Dyson and other people have said that it's a hint that life and cosmology uh, are much more bound together than we may yet realize. And I think uh, in the future that we're going to see more and more discussion of that and maybe even some uh, empirical uh, evidence that will shed light on that relationship.